Now, right now we come to the start of the end of the match reaction of Fulham versus Arsenal. And here we come with the player ratings of how these players of Arsenal performed today in this beautiful piece that they really presented to us on the field of Craven Cottage down in London. And Arsenal have won all the five London derbies throughout the season. They beat Crystal Palace, they beat Tottenham Hotspur, they beat Fulham, they beat uh, Chelsea, which other team that plays around London? They beat Brentford. So those are the five London derbies that Arsenal have gone ahead to win this season and they are really thriving and leading by example. I think they left with one London derby that is against Crystal Palace on Sunday. That is next week. That is next Sunday. So let's go to the player ratings because we've talked everything how it happened we've discussed everything in here for you and the only thing left is the player ratings to be discussed here onto the rokani media football let's go to the goalkeeper of arsenal Aaron ramsdale a little bit sloppy in certain aspects but i think he really deserved very he really deserved a very good goal into this game and i think it will be very bad to go out and not really hail a goalkeeper keeping a clean sheet and the way he was arguing for keeping a clean sheet i've read it i've read a statement when michaelata was asked about ramsdale keeping a clean sheet and now he was arguing with the defenders he said i love that i love that even when we are three goals up we shouldn't let in a goal we shouldn't let a goal in and remember in the previous two games that Arsenal have been playing against sporting lisbon and bournemouth Arsenal considered four goals so this time round, they had a reason to jubilate that they've gone ahead to keep what we call a clean sheet. And trust me, every player is blamed according to his department. Now, as the Odegaards are scoring, the Salibas, the Gabio Magali is scoring, even if they concede, then Ateta will sit them down and tell them your department is conceding. Amid is still going up and score a goal, which is good, you should watch out on how you're conceding. So, that's why Aaron Ramsdale is going to get a 7 out of 10 from me today. He's getting a 7 out of 10 from me today. We go to Ben White. You know, you like the charisma of a player who goes away and plays 90 minutes in Sporting Lisbon, then returns. And that remember, that's a Thursday. Then he returns back and plays some more minutes again in the game of Fulham, then you have to hail his efforts. That is Benny White for you. And he had a very beautiful game of football and he played 80 minutes before Tomiaso came in. So it shows you how important and how aggressive he is. And I'm giving him a 7 out of 10. That is Benny White for me in that fixture because he was solid. He was solid. And they, they just, they just, they just made it easy in the first half. To me, I believe even that game never, 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 never was interesting in the second half because we never saw very many efforts coming in from Arsenal. Fulham tried, they hit the woodwork once and the ball rattled off, but they never put out that resistance that would expect to come from a team known as Fulham at the second half. They never, they never. So Ben White really had a very beautiful game. We go to Zinchenko. He played 72 minutes, having played... Having played in the game of Sporting Lisbon close to 60 minutes, this time round he's played 72 and KNT and he came on through. So, Zinchenko, obviously, obviously good player, though sometimes looked sloppy giving away the ball, but I'm giving Zinchenko a 7.5 out of 10. One thing I like about this boy is, not this boy, is a man. One thing I like about Zinchenko is, every time he goes ahead to get that ball, he surges going forward. He doesn't think of going backwards and he rarely does a negative pass. He only does a negative pass when he's in the, in the domain of the first third of the pitch. But every time he reaches the second third of the pitch and the final third of the pitch, no negative pass from Zinchenko. Why? His ability on the ball is really immense. And I'm giving Zinchenko a 7.5 out of 10. We got William Saliba. William Saliba. Today he looked the prime William Saliba we saw at the beginning of the season. Ever since he returned from the World Cup, he was a little bit of shaky. And uh, the first two or three games, goals were considered by Arsenal because of his howlers. But Arsenal managed to capitalize onto those onto those onto those holers and obviously went ahead to win the beautiful games of football they played but he's trying to get back to the saliba you know even on thursday i saw those signals 
of Saliba I know who really came in through and really did a very beautiful job in the at Arsenal jersey at the beginning of the season so I like the way he played that is William Saliba and I'm giving him an 8 out of 10 for me I'm giving William Saliba an 8 out of 10 for me we go to his counterpart who really played very well he came on in the game of supporting Lisbon and they looked solid at the back after Jakub Kivio was taken off then guess what happened today he even got the most important goal of the game you know in every game the first goal is the most important goal of the game and it's really so much important to note out that Arsenal for their previous two games all three games they've been getting goals from unusual people in the game of Bournemouth who pulls that one who scores that who pulls one back it was Arsenal it was Arsenal's CDM known as Thomas Partey when they went to Sporting Lisbon guess who opens the score sheet it was William Saliba through a corner then Today again, it was Gabriel Magalis through a corner and obviously scoring from corners and not and not conceding and not conceding from a set piece. That was something great because in the game of Bournemouth, they scored two goals from set pieces, but they conceded a goal from a set piece. Even now in Lisbon, they conceded a goal from a set piece. This time around, they have scored a goal from a set piece, and obviously they have not allowed in any goal i mean it's full i'm getting in close to four corners in that game they say no way for you to score and that is great with them having the area threat of mitrovic because everyone was talking about mitrovic in his was talking about mitrovic with his area threat so with arsenal conceding conceding uh, from set pieces in their previous two games we thought that maybe Fulham would capitalize onto that and close them down and Mitrovic really threatens them but it was not the odd of the day. It was a different game of football altogether and Fulham found themselves in a position of not being able to really unleash that threat of Mitrovic. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. I think I gave Saliba a 7.5 out of 10. I'm giving Gabriel Magales an 8 out of 10 and for Gabriel Magales to get an 8 out of 10 for me guys you know how critical I am on him eh? but I even came out and argued why he was indicated he was included into the players contending for the man of the for the award of the month of February but this time round he was solid he scores that goal and obviously he's improving on his footballing skills and he's being and he's being composed in the back line of the center half now we go to the central defensive midfield thomas Partey, solid solid he was solid as a rock and uh he won all the battles you know all the attacks of fulham have been always initiated by pal paluin pal is he's called who pal Paulino, Paulina, he's known as Paulina, that Portuguese guy, and he was out today. Then Andreas Pereira couldn't leak up play well. I think that was that was the glitch that was into their their build up. Their chain really had one one level really broken, and that was the most important part of it. Paulina plays very well from the CDM position. He has the most interceptions in the Premier League. So he's one of those CDMs that I've even seen a story after today that Arsenal is interested in him. And I think it will be a very good signing because they'll get him on a chip. At 50 60 million pounds, you can get Paulina. You get? And he's really good. He's really good and so good. And uh, he's really talented. So missing out onto the occasion. Then Andreas Pereira, every time he got that ball, Thomas Pato was telling him, please give me my ball. It's like, Thomas Partey was controlling the entire central defensive midfield and obviously won every duel. So, today Thomas Partey played very well and really looked like that player at the prime target, as a prime age. And the only the only disadvantage that Arsenal are really going to get are the games that Thomas Partey is going to be playing in the international break. They have to keep their hands crossed to see to it that he doesn't get injured. Why? They need him in every remaining game of the premier league there are 11 games left they need him they need him in like eight games if he can offer his services in the remaining eight games trust me Arsenal are going to win the league 
they are winning the league because him and Jorginho are really great and uh, it's always good to say to it that now Thomas Partey has a genuine competitor in the names of Jorginho. He knows that if I don't do the needful, I'm going to come all out and find myself in a position of really getting myself on the bench. So he has to raise his game to the next level and I think these games are really meaning Thomas Partey is going to look like never before. That's it. So I'm giving Thomas Partey an 8 out of 10. We go to Granite Xhaka. You guys, you guys, you should come out and really appreciate me for this. You get? I'm not calling for praise on myself, but remember, I always told you that Xhaka, ever since we came from the World Cup, he's no longer looking the same. And I called for him to be benched. <coughs> now, <coughs> having been putting in Bism performances that we are really not even average in most games, <coughs> The manager benched him in the game of Bournemouth and he brought him and only played close to where they 13 minutes. After the manager benching him, Xhaka found himself in a position of asking himself, oh, the manager can now drop me and put in Fabio Vieira to play in my position because Ateta told us that Fabio Vieira is giving him a lot of sleepless headaches because he is really performing well in training. So after benching him, did you see how Xhaka played today? Guys, Xhaka played today, played very, very, very well. And for that second goal, you see how he switches play. Even Mikelata raised up his hands that put the ball this side because they had really split the pitch into two and Arsenal had started off the play from the right side and Fulham were pressing high. And guess what happened? Xhaka switches the ball to the left side they play into Trossard, Trossard sprints and then gets that cut back cross to find, I think it was a square that found Martinelli and Martinelli headed that ball in the back of the net, courtesy of, of, uh, courtesy of Granit Xhaka and did very many good things in the game. So I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. And guys, you've been watching my player ratings. When did I last give Xhaka an 8 out of 10? And this is where people come and say, Rokani, you're having an agenda on a certain player. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not an agenda, guys. When a player performs well, I'm going to come here and tell you, according to me, has played very well, and that is my rating. I'm giving Xhaka an 8 out of 10. We go to Bukayo Saka. I think has been one of those players that never performed well today, but again, 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 his threat was really failed. And uh, I think in the previous two, three games, from the game of Everton, he has been really low. And in the game of Everton, what makes him a special player is the goal he scores that really opens the deadlock. And I told you that the first goal is always important. And whoever, and whoever scores a, a special goal just finds himself in a better box of Rokan David. That's it. So today, I'm giving Saka a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Then let's go to Martin Odegaard. Oh my God, that third goal he scores, it kills off the game. It just sends a message to Fulham that we came here with an aim of killing off this game in the first half and getting our business done. It was the last nail in the coffin for Fulham. Because if we go to half time when it's 2 nil, Fulham would have said, all right, let's look for one more and maybe make it hard for them. But Odega told them, all right, Trossard played me in this ball and let me show you how to use it. He just hit it into the back of the net after those extra two three touches that he took and he never panicked so Odegaard an eight out of ten and it shows you how good he is in scoring goals he has scored 10 Premier League goals 10 Premier League goals I think he's having how many assists let me be exact let me check here Odegaard Odegaard the captain of Arsenal and I think you saw the reason as to why Arsenal fans we are worried for him not being available until when Ateta told us that he has really trained and is really fully fit and he has recovered from the flu that he was really suffering from. Now Odegaard has 10 goals in the Premier League with 6 assists. You see how important this player is and he's operating at the central attack midfield area. Now that Jesus is back, he might even score 20 goals this season because he's going to be having lots of space to operate in. And this man is going to release him anytime he feels like. So, expect lots of stuff to be coming in from Martin Odegaard after the return of Gabriel Jesus. Let's go to you. Martinelli scoring a goal. 
and he was one of the players that had connected with Granty Xhaka to really effect that own goal that Arsenal had really gotten from the left back of Fulham but he found himself offside and I like it every time he plays with Trossard. They are having some chemistry that has made them look a threat and Trossard is enjoying his play at Arsenal. So I'm giving Martinelli an 8 out of 10. Right? 8 out of 10. Let's go to Leandro Trossard. Leandro Trossard, he played 77 minutes and he was taken off. Do you know why I'm hailing this man? Do you know what it means coming in from injury? Remember, he got injured in the game of Leicester City away from home after creating that goal for... No, he got injured in the game... It was which game? Was it the Leicester game? The Leicester game, he completed it. Then there is another game that Arsenal really played when he really went down and they took him off. What was that game? What was that game? Arsenal found themselves and who scored? What was that game? Was it that of Everton? No, the Everton was the midweek. This one was a weekend game. I remember Arsenal played Aston Villa. He played. Arsenal played Leicester City. He even created the goal for Martin in the second half. This game he got off in the first half. Then... Arsenal have played Everton. They played after Everton creating an assist. Then the next game that Arsenal played after Everton. What was that game? Ooh, ooh, let me check here. What was that game that Arsenal played after Everton? That's when he really got an injury. It was an early kickoff, I think. Mm. Bournemouth 3-2 right yep he got an injury last weekend when Arsenal won 3-2 and he walked off the field of play and we thought that oh he's going to be back after the international break and surprisingly he got back and got the job done three assists on to the day he would have even found himself on target around the 30th 6th minute of the game and he did wonders today Leandro Trossard guy is a deal He's a real deal. He closes the he closes the battle or the debate. Makalo Modric and El Trossard, who is better. Trossard getting a 9 out of 10 for me today. He is getting a solid 9 out of 10 today because everything touched today turned into gold. That is Leandro Trossard. Now let's go to the substitutes. <coughs> the substitutes. Mm, Boca Rest Nelson came in the 72nd minute. I like it nowadays that the manager thinks of benching. The manager thinks of benching Rest Nelson, and it's really nice and great. So for Bukayo Saka, sorry for Rest Nelson, 6.5 out of 10. Kientian coming in through. Obviously, the game was done. He played 18 minutes. I'm giving him a 6.5 out of 10. For Gabriel Jesus, 7.5. Having been off the pitch for close to four months and you find yourself in that situation being released by Fabio Vieira, seven out of ten for me. Then Fabio Vieira obviously had a very good game for me and uh, his touch is really magnificent. I like his efficiency and the way he's really putting the hard work through the midfield. Fabio Vieira, seven out of ten. Then Tomiyasu Tokohiro, obviously I'm giving him a uh, 6.5 out of ten. We got the manager Mikel Ateta. I like the decisions he made. You get? Of bring back Gabi Jesus. Trossard from injury starting him because they were really having the center forward crisis. And Trossard just found himself in a position of really doing that job. And there they are. Topping the Premier League back again with five points ahead of Man City. Now, I'm giving Mikel Ateta an 8 out of 10. That's it. Keeping a clean sheet, good man. And obviously, the man of the match today, Leandro Trossard. It can't be no other. It's Leandro Trossard who has gone ahead and really put in three assists on the day. He's my man of the match. Now feel free to go into the comment section and tell me what you think about my player ratings and who your man of the match was. Tell me your man of the match because you might differ from me, but my man of the match is Leandro Trossard. I don't know who your man of the match is. But mine is Leandro Trossard. May the Almighty Lord bless you abundantly, guys. I sign out for now. See you later. Good night for those going to bed. 
let me catch you tomorrow i think we are kickstarting off tomorrow with some huge stories that you don't want to miss may the omatod bless you abundantly i'm out